before we go there, I just want to show you, this is the structure and distribution of an unrecognized human tissue system that runs through the whole body called, they call it interstitial. Now, this guy, um, Neil uh, Thies, Thies, whatever, how do you ever pronounce it, Gil knows him, and he says, the guy's a nice guy. These are people who are all nice people, and they say that the first time ever they've ever seen this stuff, well, that's fine. We just want to get it investigated. And th th it goes down to that every single tiny fascia fiber ends up touching a cell and to me I see that as wiring I mean I'm pretty sure this is what is is transferring information to the cellular level and then bringing it back and accumulating it at a, a central processing area which we call a brain or it may even be some organelle that is not specific you know they say the heart is a brain too i don't know i have no idea about this stuff yet but it, this is all new this is a lot of fun <laughs> all right now this is the key I had studied this for quite some time, and I knew that what was going on was fascia, which now they call interstitium, which is a complete web that coats the entire body. I, I, I show this in here, and I sent this to all of my people that were going to be doing the research with me, and they all became assaulted. I sent it to the DNA people, I sent it to the CAT scan people, I sent it to the anatomist, and I named, I mentioned somebody in here named Dave as an anatomist, but Gil Headley is the anatomist I, I work with, and he doesn't really to say anything other than, yeah, that looks like a human, whatever it is, or it looks like a bone, or whatever I say to him. I, don't, I mean, I don't say anything to him, he makes the determination is yes or no. And so far, I haven't presented anything that, that, that is not anatomically exactly what I say. That's, a, that's an apical tuft of a fingertip. Nobody can deny that once you, if you're an autopsy guy, you look at that and you say, well, it's just a bone. I mean, it's just a, a, a rock. <laughs> I can't say, you know, it's a bonehead. Anybody that's an anatomist would know that. And they'll understand these the holes in the bones and they, where the anchors are and how bones join together and where the marrow is and you know the periosteum and all of the different fabric that coats it. These are the guys you want to work with. So I did. I, and Gil Headley was the guy. But I originally was going to call this fascia facilitated fossilization. This goes back, well, six years ago. Now, I'm going to let this play and this, again, I sent this to all the people that were involved in the initial research and basically everybody sort of bailed out because it was like a attack land you, you couldn't make these statements without being being and I mean by everybody not just by other associates but by family and everybody else they don't want to hear this stuff it's just it, it's spectacular because there's giants involved that was the key and then then that really set academia off Woo -hoo -hoo. All right, I think everybody knows what, what my plan is here. That I'd like to have everybody contribute to this paper, and we'll publish it and um, hopefully uh, get some attention and uh, make this stuff known that it is it is what it is. And right now it's being considered to be just rocks, and they are not just rocks. So um, Tom is going to do the DNA, and the stuff is on the way to you, Tom. And... Um, Here's your old fashioned right there, some elastins. There's that slurpy layer. That's where the tendon invests. Anyway, uh, that's the fascia. Now, um, David is a structural fascia guy, and this is his realm right here. This is the stuff that he does. And this is the kind of stuff that I want him to comment on for the paper. Between his comments, my specimens and, and, and work, scanning a visual, DNA analysis, I mean, what the hell? If we can't get it accepted now, I mean, you know, but I need everybody, so everybody's got to be on board. Anybody doesn't want to be in on this, let me know now, because this is, and this really, literally, is one of the biggest uh, things going, I mean, I think. Anyway, stay tuned, uh, the rest is coming right now. Okay, I'm going to let this little slideshow go with some of the pictures we have. That's the actual, uh, I made that with chicken tissue. 
and that is uh, chicken tissue uh, also I, I uh, all of this stuff in the beginning here look at that that's the facial investment looks like of the chicken tissue and that is actual fossil that was electrofossil and that is also a fossil so it's very very similar but anyway um, okay this is the tendon assembly now remember this carefully there's like three sections and it comes down as they are wavy and then they get smaller 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 and 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 they end up with you know those little emphasis points and investing in sharpies fibers and bone and tissue all right as far as tendons and ligaments and fashion all that stuff goes it's all made out of collagen and, and fibrins and uh, keratins and all this very very fibrous stuff and it has a mat that's the the mat of a tendon and F in the mat it splices off into these little straps these straps go through what they call a Chinese finger trap which goes through that and the ball there invests into the tissue below or um, in this case it would be tissue I'm sure now that ball if you can see that little round ball that should not be out like that that should be invested into something that is a painful thing I'm sure and and, and of course uh, David would know more about this this is his whole daily work here now there is usually three layers of ten, uh, ligaments tendons whatever you want to call them connective tissues and they slide back and forth and do all kinds of things now in order to slide back and forth they're in their own sheaths and their sheaths are you know coated with I, I think they call it synovial fluids and things like that now this particular stuff right here see that little bumpy stuff that is what I'm going to call slurpees which is small leucine rich proteins look at it really careful I don't know if you can see it anyway that that is it's a real bumpy slurpy stuff and I have that and it's blood red and anyway this is the tendon mat assembly all right that tendon mat assembly and that tendon ball is microscopic this is a tendon from I believe a tendon mat and they all break in the same place where that strap goes across this is the slurpees this is another strap that sat right on top of here and they slipped across and that is the fibers that come down through there and into this ball and that ball usually sits into something and this one I assume was in cartilage or something like that in some some loose connective tissue and, that, and it pulls out now I have other ones where the fibers are are missing because they were in some form of a, a pH condition that, that ate them out of there um, that's how that's how um, how these things form uh, tendons now that ball like I said is the size of um, well it's microscopic. I mean, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. Now, if you look above here, there's the formula for the surface area of a sphere. And if I put in, you have to be positive entry. So I'm going to put in one is the radius, and therefore the surface area is 12.57. Now, the radius of one when you talk about this thing this radius would be at least I would say let's just say a hundred times larger I mean it's obviously much larger than that because you this would you wouldn't hardly see this you need a microscope to see that in in in, in this other one whoops now so that was a one gave us 12.75 now if we go for this one whoops If we go for this one here, and we say that's a hundred times bigger, so that's one, zero, zero. Now we've got 1.26 times 10 to the 5. If that was a thousand times bigger, 
we would have 1.26 times 10 to the 7. I have no clue how big that is, but 10 to the 7 is a lot of zeros. So you understand that the surface area of a ball goes up absolutely phenomenally as the diameter and the radius increase. This was always the skeptic's conclusion that the tiny diameter of the little tendon balls and the investments would never hold up some big creature. Well, no. Wrong. All right, David, th this is about how the tendons uh, and the um, ligaments and the, even the uh, skin attaches to the layers of the skin. The, these are, are some of the um, investments that I'm talking about. And they come up and they clamp like a ball, just like that. And the skin is on the other side, and they clamp right to the skin, and then there's one on the other side, and it clamps down to the underlayer, and in between is this areolar tissue, which is the loose connective tissue. That's what I'm saying. Now, you're going to have to see if, you're, if you think I'm correct. Now, this is flesh. All right? So I'm saying the flesh is below. It's on that side. This is this tendon emplacement. And you can see all of the little tags around here. And this is the investment that goes this way. And there's slurpees on there, or SLRPs they call them, the small leucine rich proteins. Now, so those invest down in there. And here is one I'm going to show you. This is a fingertip. Let me see if I can get in here and get a little more light. All right. Here's the way it, it invests. If you can see these balls right here, that circular set of balls, that's stuck down this way and held onto the skin. All right? And it held onto the skin with all those little fibrils. Here's another one over here somewhere. Right over here. I mean, they're all over the place, but some of them are very, very prominent. And they have spikes. They literally have spikes that grab just like that into the skin and the other direction that grab just like that into the basement layer. And I have them in all the transition layers. This one here, you can see the spikes. The only thing that's missing here is the skin. The skin is missing off of this one. All right. And this one here... The skin is missing. It's what they call degloved. That outer layer of connective tissue is gone. It would have hooked into these angular slots all over the place. So that's, that's degloved. And this one is completely degloved down to the basement layer. All the areola tissue is gone until you see the emplacement of the artery, which I always tell you blows out, which it does, and then the vein side does not blow out because it's clamped. You know, and there's a vein right there. It leaks a little bit, but they clamp. And the veins are the ones that always leak. And I have this over and over and over and over and over. And this is where the areolar tissue would have invested into this basement layer. And then that layer wraps the bone, which this is the silhouette, exact silhouette of a human fingertip. And it even has the uh, apical tuft on the end, which is the gnarly little thing that holds all these little balls. And that's, that's what it is. And these are from big creatures, but this is nothing. I mean, this is the way you see it, and you're going to see it in a minute, because I told you, I have never shown anybody on the face of the planet this yet. You're the only ones to see this. Well, the first, because it's going on the internet, but I'm, I'm just done hiding this stuff, because it's time to let it loose, that's all. All right, David, so you saw the skin investment. That goes down and grabs and turns around this way and grabs. So that's between the areolar tissues, and I'm sure it goes other places. But it's, it's very characteristic and have a lot of examples of it. Now, then you go into the bone implant, and that's where you get this. That's a, a regular ball, and inside that ball, if you can see, there's all those little holes. Those, I believe, are the Sharpie's fibers, or at least they're tendrils of some sort. And they may, but anyway, this is all, uh, this is something, I don't want to go into too much detail, everybody will get bored. But that is this type of a, of a in, in 
implant. Now there's other types of bone implants that are that hook into these. See that right there? That is where a ligament attaches. And this one over here is another one. All right. All right. And that's what makes that bone do what it does. Now this is um, cartilage and it goes all the way across over to here is cartilage. And that's when this wears down, you get hurt. And these are your, uh, I believe those are blood supplies. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, that's the arterial uh, uh, foramen. This here, these little holes, they call those uh, canaliculuses. And those are blood supplies, the can can canals, canals. Now, the whole thing is wrapped with fascia. And there's a triangle, I don't know if you can see it or not. I suppose you can see it. The way this is, it's called tunica in the German, in the uh, Greek days. And it wraps around and invests itself just like a tunica. Tu uh, uh, you, know, no, you know what I'm talking about, tunica. And, and it's, it's a fabric blanket that wraps around the bone. And now this I would like to have um, Fabio and, and Jesse take a look at this because I'm sure this will scan. Well, I'm not positive, but if it would, it's going to be really interesting because you'll be able to see the distinction between the cartilage. You know, there, there is actual cracks in here and that would come off and I you know in my other videos I show the strip bones the differences you guys have probably I hope you've seen it. anyway that's that's the bone investment type and then you also have the one I just showed you a minute ago which is this one here is the these are like triangular investments they go down and out and they fill right into these triangles and there's sharpies fibers everywhere and then they come down and attach into the muscles with these little flaky um, pine cone looking um, shingly looking things and that attaches to ligaments and those are what I find now in, in addition obviously fascia fascia this is the, exactly what we're talking about and this is on everything and uh, David, I believe your exact words were, and I'm 100% correct in what I'm saying about this. So I need you to be with me to say that to people, because it's true. And, and you're one of the only ones that understands it. So I need you, brother. So anyway, get, get back to me on this one. But anyway, I'm going to show you some more in your field, and everybody else will see at the same time. And, and, and I'm going to show all the different things that I need to have tested. All right. This is important to understand. That's the little strap that runs from the tendon mats down onto that ball. And that ball, it looks round in there and perfectly round, but it isn't. It's a spiky little, really spiky ball, and I'll show you what it looks like. That is supposed to be inside of something. Now, sometimes it goes into, uh, I'm not sure where it goes, David will know about that, but that is supposed to be implanted and that's what holds it and and, and the, it, it, it's, it anchors this and the mat does what it's supposed to do and pulls your fingers around and stuff. Now, this is my representation of what that does. It's a flat mat. It comes out and there's slurpees on the top because something slides across it and it lays there and digs right in just like that into tissue below. And these always have two very apparent blood holes on the sides. Now that is a tendon implant. You saw the one I just showed you, the little ball. That little ball is literally the same size, uh, well the, the little ball on this one, this is a microscope shot which obviously this is like a thousand, two thousandths of an inch, I don't know whatever they are, they're, they're not very big at all. Now, I, I told you to hold on here buddy, here it comes. This is the size of the tendon emphasis balls that I am finding and that is a ball right there. There was two of them one slid across the top, that's the slurpy layer, and that is the strap that ran back. There would have been a ball attached to here, you know, I cut it off. And this ball was just absolutely totally round, just like a baseball. 
You see that the architecture of it totally wrong. And this, inside there, those little white flakes are the fibrils that come down and implant into whatever it implanted into, the bone or the uh, tissue below. And this is the um, external surface of the tendon. It's a layer, it could be the, you know, the periosteum, I think they call it, or it could be the fascia, but it has that same material, uh, tunica fabric in there. Very apparent under the microscope. Now, those invest in the bone, and that is, this is thousands and thousands of times bigger than what is in a human being. I mean, it's just gigantic for a human being, but this is tiny. This is what I'm saying. Hold on to your hats, guys, because here's what a big one looks like. All right? Hold on. i gotta get, I got to get back for this. There it is right there. This is what a big one looks like. This is the strap coming in. This is the slurpy layer at the top. And these are the spikes all the way around it. And I can show you that, and I can pretty much prove it. There's your blood supplies, right there, those are the two blood supplies on this side. They always go on this side. Now there's another one coming below this from over here, and that has its blood supplies. But I believe they're usually, it seems to me they're on the left side. Now, these spikes, they're what they call plagial clases, and those plagial clases, you see this? They dig in just like teeth. I'm not kidding you, they just dig right in just like teeth. That's exactly what they do. And this is the investment of skin. All right? That's the investment of skin. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. But that thing is like a dinner plate. And that is what skin is on some gigantic creature. I mean, this, I, and this is not even the biggest stuff I have either. So all I can tell you is it's, you're into something here that I, you know, it's baba. And that's what it is. I mean, that's this here. If you look at it under a microscope, that's Slurpees. That was blood. It's a, it's a, and I, sh you know, I've shown you the red blood, and and, and and this is the same thing. Hold on a second. I have another one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here it is, right? Here. I'm gonna put a little water on it. Give me a second, guy. All right, this is the one that I showed before. You got to put a little water on to get dry, and you can't see hard anything. But this is this. The tendon came down, and then the the strap ran over here, and I cracked this all off. And that is where it invested below. That is where it dropped right in there. That's the center, really. And you can feel it. There's a depression right there. That's exactly what it is. That's the center. Where, oops, there's a center where I broke this off. You can feel depression there too. And this would have laid out across this whole surface. And that is what slides. This is a tendon assembly. There's three of them in here. And the plagioclases, which are these flakes, these white fabric flakes, they're very brittle and hard, are the same plagioclases as I show in this. These right here. And the reason these are showing up instead of being completely covered over is they've been etched with acid. And the acid is from the volcanoes which are right in this area. And the acid gets in and eats them away. And there are places where they're not eaten away because the acid hasn't got in. And that's one of them right there. You probably can't see the difference in color. but. That is what they look like, and I have better shots of this. This is all scratched up because I sent some of this to you, Tom. This is the one you're getting for the DNA, um, and I think I, I, I called it uh, tendon assembly or something. But these, these will snap right off of here, and you find this slurpy layer everywhere. But acid, the pH is the key, and this is what they call limonite, and this Particular, I think they call it limonite, I'm not sure. But th this particular stuff is the product of volcanic acid r runoff, extremely low pH acid, which causes the, the material to change. And I have other examples, it's just like this. This was fascia, fascia. 
alright, and the, the blood was surface was out there, but when you hit it with enough acid, it gets rid of all the organic stuff. Now this is what fascia looks like before you hit it with the acid. And that has all of the crystals and all of the blood inside of it and all that stuff. But once you put this and soak it in acid, it, it eats all that stuff away and you end up with something like this. So anyway, um, and, and Tom, you are getting fascia from this, uh, is to, for the DNA, I took it right from here, and that's the lower uh, investment of a lung, and that looks like a human lung to me, I don't know what anybody else can say. Uh, I might have taken some out from up here too, but it's the same lung, so. Anyway, that you're getting, Tom. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, I mean, look at that thing, man. This is unbelievable. I don't know what to say. The world is um, crazy, but it's what it is. I, anyway, th this here is a lung. And this one, I, I'd like to have you guys, uh, Jesse, Tom, take a look at this. This is a lung. Those are the lobes of the lung. Very, very... Um, weathered away, uh, and, but it's completely gone, the fascia is gone, all of the uh, outside articulation is gone. What's left is the internal passageways in here. Now, also what's left is some of the, the back, the guy's ribs in the back. This is the lung, and he died in this manner, and eventually it eroded away, and, and you had this sort of stuff on the top. <clears throat> but the back is still here, and the ribs are still here. Um, there's a, a lot of, uh, like this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's bones all over the place in here. And there's bones on the side, you can see the actual ribs going down. Now, if you have that 3D stuff, this would be pretty cool to see. Um, it was some kind of, I, think the, I think it's supposed to be like this. I would say if this was a human being, it would be a left lung. And there's the top investment. And there's the bottom investment. So anyway, that one I'm going to send to you guys, Tom. And I'm going to send you this one too. This is what they call an apical tuft. On our fingers, it's it's like about a quarter of an inch on the tip. And then these little balls implant in there. And I have other ones to show the exact balls implanting. And this one here actually is the same ball implant on the end here. This is a fingertip. And it has the, it's, 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 I've got all the articulation on this. That might be something I should send you, Tom. I mean, um, uh, Fabio. But anyway, I, I'll send a bunch of stuff. I really, you know, I, I need it looked at. Now, this is a lung. This is a lung that was in acid. I mean, I didn't put it in acid. It was in acid. Now, I don't know what it was, a big monkey or something. And that was the corner investment that they all have. Wraps around, tags it in. Now, I'm not sure how that works in the body, but, I mean, it's all here, the same architecture. These are what they call uh, vugs. When they, they eat out the holes in the lungs, they think they're just holes from volcanic bubbling. It's not. Those are the holes that were in there from the airwaves airways. Now, they fill up with semi-precious stones, actually uh, crystals. And there, there's some in here, I don't know where they are, I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff, but it, that's just, in the other ones I have, in the ones that have not deteriorated, like, like that actually is a lung, believe it or not, that's a, that's a lung. I know it's hard to believe, and they're, they're uh, I have other ones. I have a lot of them. Lungs particularly well preserved. This one here, as you know, I've been saying this is a lung, and it is. I can guarantee you that. And inside of there, it has some of that same sort of stuff. You know, it'll have something forms it, and I can show you. I'm going to show you some crystals that are inside of lungs. It blow your mind. Anyway.
Fabio, I tell you, buddy, I was going to show you something to knock your socks off, and I got to go even further past this. <laughs> All right, what you're looking at right here is this slab. It's one layer of tendon, believe it or not. I mean, it is, I'm telling you. There's the blood, the vein in the artery. All the running out, and this one didn't run out. And this is where the Slurpee runs on the bottom. And if you've seen my video on the little finger and how veins turn into crystal tubes, that is a vein. And that is uh, the artery. One or the other, vein or the artery. But you see this? This is the size of that vein. And that's why you have this structure. And they crack on the planes of the, the tendon layer. And uh, these are those emplacements. And that's one layer of tendon. These creatures were big. <laughs> You know, I did some calculations, and, and, and uh, it's hard to believe if uh, if I'm right. <laughs>